in the words of Mr. Bean, brace yourselves. So over at Breitbart, welcome back to the channel, Culture Confederacy here. It's Monday, so happy Monday, everybody. But over at Breitbart, they talk about the Wall Street Journal, talk about how there could be all this violence if Trump wins. But then if you go over to another site, I believe this is at The Independent, they say here, threats of armed occupations and lone wolf terrorism, what might happen if Trump loses? So basically, if one side loses, the other side isn't going to be happy. If the other side loses, the other side's not going to be happy. Oh my God, what are we going to do? This is the election of all elections. It's going to end every election we've ever had before. The greatest election of our lifetime. Until the next election. Until the next election after that. So of course, everybody was calling this rally at Madison Square Garden. They were all calling this rally... A return to the Nazi rally, Madison Square Garden, 1939. Really now? Can I tell you something? Being somebody of German heritage, German descent, not even close, not even close. But I'm going to read you excerpts here from each. And then I posted another article over at Substack if you want to go and read that. For the sake of time, I'm not going to do that article here. I'll read maybe an excerpt from it for you. We can go over to Substack, and if you go to X, you can uh, click on the link for that. The title of the article is, No, Trump's Madison Square Garden Rally Was Not Inspired by Nazis. Or something to that effect. I, I can't remember my own title here. But basically, that's the title of the article. No, Trump's rally was not inspired by Nazis. And if you're new to the channel, no fancy graphics, epic soundtracks, pretty boy camera angles. It's you, me, my smartphone, the news of the day, and this mission, this crusade to preserve great art, music, history, and culture. So let's get into this. So let's start with, where should we go? Should we go with Breitbart? Maybe I'll start with Breitbart. So Breitbart is reporting that Democrats are saying to brace for violence if Trump wins. It's called an unrest. Brace for unrest. Not violence. You see, it's unrest. Got to be politically correct now. So it says here that over at the Wall Street Journal, Joshua Chafin and Valerie Berlin, I think it is, Berlin, pardon me, B-A-U-R-B-A-U-E-R-L-E-I-N, said that citizens should be bracing for unrest if Trump wins. Across America, more than a dozen progressives in various positions of influence told the Wall Street Journal that they are dreading the prospect of Trump's return to power. This made that half the country might see a completely different reality than they see. Some are bracing for unrest on a recent... See, that's the new word. Unrest. You're going to be hearing a lot about that in the next couple of days. The word unrest. There'll be a lot of unrest out there. You'll be unrested. On a recent evening, more than 200 people joined a Zoom meeting titled Mass Training for Women's Safety Teams. <laughs> now, I've said this before. If you see something with a title that long or an organization with a title that long, you know it's suspect. Red flag. Big red flag. Hosted by a Women's March veteran who noted its timing amid escalating political violence. Escalating political violence. And that's in quotes. Others are channeling their, channeling now, their nervousness into action. They are planning to attend women's marches scheduled in Washington beyond on Saturday before the election. And Boston, they're, get this, going to have these pill-packing parties, a pill-packing party, where volunteers fill boxes with abortion kits to mail to women in red states with strict limits. See, all you evil Republicans. Now, I'm an independent voter, said that before. And I think both parties are full of crap. In fact, I think Trump should have run as an independent. I think Trump should have actually chosen instead of J.D. Vance. Now, J.D. Vance is a strong candidate for VP, no question about it. But I really think that Trump should have chosen a black woman for a running mate. Black female president. That's what he should have done. So in Boston, they're going to have these pill-packing parties. There could be unrest in the streets. Over at Breitbart. Now, if go to this article here at the Independent again, 
threats of armed occupations and lone wolf terrorism might happen if Trump loses. And of course, what do they resort to? Resort back to rather January 6th. January 6th. Of course, as I predicted before, it's all going to come down to January 6th. We don't want another January 6th, but there could be unrest. There could be unrest. We're just warning you now. So they talk about Benny Thompson during the January 6th committee hearing, saying that his voice was measured and calm, the direct opposite of what's about to transpire in the video that he showed. I love the description here. The first image shows a huge crowd of people, some waving Union, Confederate, and Trump flags. Now, that's kind of an oxymoron. You've got a Union flag and you have a Confederate battle flag. I thought the Confederacy was against the Union. Am I missing something here? But you saw this huge crowd of people waving Union and Confederate battle flags. Now, the funny thing is, Republicans and Democrats do the same thing here. They accuse each other of being pro-Confederate or Nazis. That's what they do. This wouldn't happen if we had more voices in the fray. I'm telling you that now. It wouldn't happen if we had more people in the political spectrum here. And there were shouts of, take the building and F you police. Officer calls for help on the phone line. We are still taking metal sharpened objects, missiles, bottles, and rocks. Oh my God, and hand-thrown chemical grade fireworks. Why wasn't there enough security to handle the crowd? Well, we don't know. You know, it just it looks good on camera. That's all. This all looks good on camera. It's the scene from inside the Capitol the building of the rioters busting in, visceral, suffocating, devastating. Oh, the language here. Oh, my God. That will likely be playing on the minds of potentially millions of Americans in the final run up to November 5th. It's all going to be like January 6th if Trump loses. So what happened Sunday night at Madison Square Garden? Was it a return to the Nazi rally of 1939? No. These people were energized. You could tell that they loved being Americans. They were patriotic. And by the way, there is nothing anti-American about wanting to put America's needs first. That's how any country survives. That's how any country survives. So the article that I wrote over at Substack, I'm just going to read a brief excerpt here for you, talking about that Nazi rally, February of 1939. So the uh, the rally was hosted by the German-American Bund. Now, their membership did not exceed 25,000. So they have roughly 25,000 members. And they held numerous demonstrations had nearly 12 summer camps to educate German-American youth about the quote-unquote glories of Nazism. And children at these meetings wore Hitler-like outfits, waved Nazi banners. I have not seen Trump do that yet. Show me where Trump has these Nazi-like camps where he was bowing down to a statue of Adolf Hitler last night at this rally at Madison Square Garden, where he was touting fascism. Okay, so you had a comedian. Forget the guy's name. Some comedian who made an off-color joke, a blue joke, about Puerto Ricans. Was it crass? Was it in poor taste? Yes. But it's a joke. You people need to loosen up out there. You people need to loosen up out there. It's a joke. I can guarantee you nobody in the runaway media here would last two seconds at a Don Rickles concert. You would not last two seconds at a Don Rickles show. Guaranteed. What about what Chris Rock has said or Car- uh, George Carlin? They're all comedians. The whole purpose of comedy is satire. If you can't poke fun at yourself, who can you poke fun at? Now, this comedian's comment that Puerto Rico is a floating isle of garbage in the Caribbean, he's not talking about Puerto Ricans. He's talking about how the nation of Puerto Rico is being run right now. That's what he's talking about. So this Nazi rally, February of 1939, Madison Square Garden, was spearheaded by Fritz Kuhn. And they were touting fascism. They booed FDR, targeted the Jewish population, 
They long for a fascist system in the United States. Doesn't sound like uh, pro-American to me. Sounds like anti-American. And Kuhn had failed to uh, gain favor with the Nazi party in Germany at the time. Called himself the American Fuhrer. So this is completely opposite to this idea of liberty, free speech, free commerce. Completely opposite. And what did Hitler do? Being somebody of German descent, I can talk about this. Not only did Hitler go after the Jews, but he went after the Poles, the Serbs, the Slavs. He killed his own people in the Deutschland. Those who were handicapped, those who went against Hitler, clergy, Jehovah Witnesses, all those people were killed by the Third Reich regime. And then he uh, upped the uh, state police, the Gestapo. That's not what Trump's doing here. So in no way, shape, or form was this rally last night at Madison Square Garden, was this a return to Nazism 1939? Are you crazy? Are you nuts out there? So I thought I'd share this with you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. You can follow me at Instagram, hashtag Jason Composes, because I write music in my spare time. Just remember, you have to brace yourself now. We could have unrest out there. If Trump loses, it could be like January 6th. But if Trump wins, would it be like January 6th for the Democrats? Are they going to have more of these pill-packing parties in Boston, San Francisco, Seattle, D.C., Chicago, you name it? What will they do? If Trump wins, oh my God, what will the Democrats do? So follow me at Instagram, hashtag Jason Composes, because I write music in my spare time. You can go to X, Culture Confederacy at Culture Confed 1 on X, and now you can find me at Substack. So this is the Culture Confederacy saying peace out. Stay safe, everybody. God bless this thing called the United States. I'll catch you next time, and you'll have a great Monday. Take care.